Hey podcast, what's up? I just wanted to tell you about a really special event that I'm throwing next week, May 8th, called Clarity Con Automotive. It's an event for progressive dealers who want to cut through the noise and all the garbage that's bogging down your efforts to move forward in automotive. I have national level speakers coming in. So it's in Rochester, New York on May 8th. It's a one day event. And if you use the code Paul VIP all lowercase, P-A-U-L-V-I-P. You'll get an extra discount um, just for the listeners of this podcast. So I hope to see you there next Wednesday, May 8th, Rochester, New York, Clarity Con Automotive. Welcome to episode 63 of the Clarity Compressed Podcast. My name is Paul J. Daly, and this week we're talking about a book. Clarity can only really exist in the light of truth. Branding just isn't a tactic. It's a lifestyle change. So this isn't any book. And if you've been following me, you know that I've been working on this for the last at least six weeks. And I know it doesn't seem long to be working on a book. But frankly, this book took a decade to write. And if you know, you're know you any age in life over you know 20, you understand that the things that happen in any one, one moment really didn't just happen in that one moment that the experiences in life and the things that have you've learned and the things that you failed at and the things that you've tried the things that you've won the things that you've lost all of that makes the sum of who you are so that prepares you for that moment to react whatever way you react to be prepared to write a book or take a job or ask the girl to marry you to prepare um prepare you to stand up against the bully, to prepare you to stay calm when you used to get angry. All of those things are a culmination of the character that you've built over a long period of time and a combination of the knowledge that you've gained and the experiences that you've had, which is one of the reasons that age is a benefit in so many ways because every year that you live and every experience that you have, you make better decisions, or at least you have more um, information and more, um, you're supposed to have better judgment. I won't say that you have better judgment, Um, but that's, I think, all of our goal is that as we grow, we have better judgment. So this book, The Automotive Manifesto, is the culmination of a decade plus of building a business. Actually, I started the first business I built in 2003, so coming up on 17 years. So it's really the culmination of 17 years building a business and trying to figure out the best ways to serve people and build company culture and make my way through my own deficiencies there, make my way through my own insufficiencies there. And that really is the essence of growth. Then on the book, I go on to talk about the automotive industry in general. I talk about what I'm going to do, what I would suggest. Let me go back to the premise of the book. So I talk about a lot of things in automotive to wrap that thought up. And then I, I end in talking about branding, marketing, and connection. Really, the, the center point of this book is connection. And so this this podcast episode isn't a book advertisement, but I would like to talk about the things in the book. I mean, it's not an advertisement. You can buy the book if you want. But if not, I put out enough content that you get the gist. But it is a cool little package. But I want to talk about the, the thinking behind the book and the thinking behind some of the chapters because there are a lot of deeper issues um, that don't directly have to do with the automotive industry. So this book is full of the things that have made me me and my perspective. When you get the book, you get like the team. We made up some stickers. This is uh, something that I say all the time. I'll show you in the camera. It says brand beats the hacks. There it is, guys. Brand beats the hacks. And what I mean by that is that when you build a brand, you really develop out the connection that a brand can have with customers, consumers, uh, other individuals, donors, members of the congregation, whatever it is, when you build out the brand and you connect with people, it by far outlives any kind of ad strategy or hacking the algorithm or trying to cut corners on your way to connection. It doesn't. Brand always outlives those. Also have a sticker here. It says dealers are a gritty breed. And that's kind of one of the core beliefs of the book, I talk about how auto dealers have survived quite a bit um, over the course of the years. And then also we got a Pursue Clarity sticker. Can't see that. So we give some stickers away with the book and here we go, we got some, got a stack came in this afternoon, We're shipping these out tonight. And uh, yeah, so let me just talk about 
Let me get into the book a little bit. I'm going to read my acknowledgments. Maybe it's a little reading for a second. So the acknowledgments of the book says, this book is for my wife, Sarah, and three children, Miles, Brooklyn, and Elise. Your love, passion, and patience have made me who I am. We're in this together. Everyone that's got a good partner by your side, you understand that you aren't going anywhere if you don't have that support and you don't have the person that holds you up when you're not in front of the camera, when you're not at game time, when you're not at work. And uh, really, without my wife and my kids, I'm a totally different man at this point in my life. So without their influence in me, I'd be different. I like who I am. Next, this book is for the mentors who have personally invested in me over the past few years. Gary Vaynerchuk, Dale Pollack, James Orsini, Todd Caputo, Claude Silver, and Lou Brego. I hope to make your time ROI positive. I want to take a second and say something about mentors. Mentors are givers. They're people who have given their time, energy, emotional investment in you because they believe that you can be better and they believe that they can actually um, further their work through you. So if you're ever looking for a mentor or you're in a mentoring relationship where you are the mentee, you're the one learning and receiving, let me tell you one thing. Think about what you can do to make their time worth it. It's a value transfer. So when I say, I hope to make your time ROI positive, I remember some of the people I've gone up to, um, Lou Brego in particular, when I asked him if years ago, if he would you know, be a mentor, I said, I promise I won't waste your time. Because at all the men I just listed, their time is very valuable because they understand that their time, it's the most valuable thing to them. So by me writing this book and acknowledging them, I feel like I'm carrying some of their work forward. So uh, shout out to the mentors and a little word on mentors. If you're ever looking for a mentor or you're in a mentoring relationship. Next, this book is for my team who entrust a good measure of their time, talents, and opportunities with me. I'm working for you. And I don't know if anybody on my team current or past is on the live stream still. Um, if you see this podcast, I know the people who edit it will, they'll, they'll tell you, I really fully wholeheartedly believe that my job is to work for the men and women that dedicate the years of their lives to serve this company's agenda and this company's trajectory and this company's opportunity. I work for them. And I think any boss, any boss, I hate the word boss, but any boss, any employer, any leader who has the privilege of having people be willing to follow them, the privilege of being of the privilege of people giving up other opportunities to take an opportunity under their leadership has an extreme obligation to them. And I, I've always said this. I said it with Image Auto. I say it with Congruent. I'll say it with every other organization I ever lead, lead if any more, in the future. My obligation as a leader, as the CEO of this company, is to provide the most amount of opportunity for the most amount of people. So um, I wanted to acknowledge that in the book. And I think that that is the crux of a good leader. They work for the people that follow them to make decisions that provide the most amount of opportunity for the most amount of people. And the second you lose that is the second your organization changes. Finally, this book is most directly for the dealers and auto industry partners, branders, marketers, and company culture makers who are driven to be better. You are my people. And so that's kind of a broad group I just mentioned. You know, primarily I say the most about the auto industry in this, but this book is really the culmination of me trying to connect with the people who believe that there's a better way. The, the people that believe that brand connection, the subtitle of the book is how brand connection can save retail automotive and brand connection. The center point of this entire book is connection. And whether it's on the HR side, on the fixed operations side, where you're trying to figure out your processes, on the marketing and advertising side, we live in an, it, we live in an age where people crave and value connection more than ever before. I know that there's a lot of talk saying, you know, computers and social media is like ruining us and it's pulling us apart. And I understand like some of those things are true. But what I would say is that people more than ever desire to be connected 
to more people, to one another, to products that they buy, to organizations that they affiliate with. And through digital means, we have the opportunity to connect. So the old guard says that it's self-aggrandizing and everyone's obsessed with themselves. And you can be. I'm not saying you can't be. You can be. But I believe that the new guard who understand the power of the platforms and the power of, of the human desire and drive to connect understand that this, this is an opportunity to make a meaningful connection with other human beings. So that's the premise that the book is written on. And um, I go through that in detail in the book. I talk about it, the automotive industry. I talk, talk about um, what dealers have been through. I talk about, I give a little bit of, little bit of background about myself. So if you're a little curious on a little, some little slices of my upbringing, I talk about my first jobs and I talk about the family I grew up in a little bit and um, talk about my current family and just my little journey in business over the last 17 years. Here you go. I get right into it. You must connect. And this is part of the premise. I'm going to read a little bit um, because I'm talking about connection. This comes from chapter two. The chapter is titled, You Must Connect. It says, connection has always existed. It is a primal component of humanity, primarily for physical safety and survival. Now, in addition to these baseline needs, our modern society allows us to connect in much deeper and more frequent ways. Human connection now occurs on every level, from important things like new babies, down to the most superficial of things like your friend's weekend outing, your team's latest free agent signing, or that funny noise your dog makes when it sleeps. Either way, social media has made it possible to generate countless touch points, all of which determine our level of connection and affinity, or lack thereof, to the world around us. You must connect, but what does that really mean? There you go, a little piece of connection out of chapter two. Um, Now, again, this book is geared towards automotive in a lot of sections, and in the middle especially, because people ask all the time, what type of dealership would you build? So I go through in some detail talk about the dealer I would build, what my sales model would be, um, how I have some ideas on like what I would do with existing technologies. Like if you want to buy a car and you're on my website and you want to see a car, well, I'd happen to have the cars available to see with a virtual walk around guide ready to go. So someone on like FaceTime, you could tap it in and then they'd be like, hey, how are you? Let me show you this car. What do you want to see? Um, and some some other ideas on what I would do there. Um, I also talked through what I would do for company culture. And, and the company culture chapter is really universal because people are people and people want to connect regardless of what they do and regardless of where they sell. And I think that if a car uh, dealer is a great place to work and a fun place to work and a place that helps people thrive, I've said this before, that thriving is career development. They say millennials want career development, a feeling of contribution. Like those are awesome traits to want. And when they feel like they're thriving, they're doing those things. So I get into the company culture chapter uh, quite a bit. Actually, one of my uh, favorite and uh, I think most talented thinkers, innovative thinkers on the topic of company culture, Claude Silver, the chief heart officer of VaynerMedia, actually endorsed the back of the book. So that's pretty cool. She said, Paul is challenging the automotive industry by being care, candor, and connection to the forefront. His automotive manifesto contains truth that we can all stand behind no matter what the industry. So... Um, the company culture chapter is kind of relevant to anyone in business or an organization. If you're trying to build culture, if you're trying to cultivate things, um, that's good. Of course, I talk about brand. You know, that's kind of my jam. So I have a, a long chapter on brand. And I'm talking about automotive specifically, saying it's a brand grab, like a land grab. If you think about it, when there's a land grab, uh, there's a great scene in a movie. Uh, it's a little older now, I'm dating myself. It's called Far and Away. It's got uh, Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman in it. And it, it, they're kind of traveling out west when there was kind of the gold rush and they gave out all this land and they would have this big race where, you know, the gun went off and then all the people on their horses and wagons raced out to these plots of land and they claimed it. And once the piece of land was claimed, they jammed the flag in the ground and it belonged to them. Well, it's the same thing when we're talking about brand because once you stake a claim in somebody's psyche, in their heart, once you stake that claim, guess what? It's yours until someone else pulls it away or you really screw it up. So in automotive specifically, no one's really doing that. A lot of people are um, selling on price and payment and they say things that everybody else says and they think it's special, like, you know, we're family owned, like that is special, 
But if your next five competitors can say that too, it's not unique. It's more of a table stake. Like, yes, we give to the community. So does every other dealer. So those are great things, but that's more of a table stake than it is a unique selling point. So I talk about the brand grab saying when you develop, um, strategically develop a retail brand, you have the opportunity to now claim your place in that person's mind and heart and wallet and purchasing habits. And once you grab that, it takes twice or three times as much effort for a competitor to pull that away, or you really have to screw it up. So I get into that a lot in the last chapter. Um, And I talk about the kind of business we are actually in if we're in retail. Talk about we're in the customer experience business, we're in the transparency business, we're in the great place to work business, we're in the convenience business, and we're in the give the customer what they want, when they want it, how they want it, or go out of business business. So I get down to business in the brand chapter. Um, And then I talk about the benefits of the people that do it, talk about why 90% of people won't do it, And then I end again on connection. And then again, got some pictures. So that's a fly through of the book. Thanks for sticking in there with it. Again, I'm doing what I can to contribute to the conversation in retail branding, to the conversation in retail automotive. And um, if anything, just show you just, it's a kid from Philly with a lot of years of just swinging the ax and grinding, and this is one little contribution. And so I'm happy to release it to the world. I am so thankful that anybody bought it and is willing to read it. Um, I'm so thankful that you have given your time to listen to the podcast or watch the show, interact with the content, share it with other people you think that might like it, because that's really what it's about, sharing the things that are meaningful to you, that bring value to you, And I define value as something you can take and then deploy immediately. So I hope that you can take some of this stuff and deploy it in your thinking, in your actual operation, in your life, and somehow in some way as you pursue the clarity for the things that you want, for the things that you are heading toward, for the situations in your life. So again, thank you for listening. Thanks for watching. For those of you that bought the book, Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's also available on Kindle. If you're a Kindle person, we're about to release an audio book, which was a lot of fun to record. And um, that's really it. Actually, no, it's not it. I want to tell you about one more thing as if uh, my team has told me several times and in several venues that if I do this to them again, there's going to be a problem. And what I did was, well, we wrote a book. I wrote this book and I decided like, okay, we're going to launch this now. But... In the meantime, I also decided that we're going to put on a live event at the same time, kind of. So I, I, I definitely uh, put us through a little stress test here. But we're going to come out of it. The live event is in uh, just like a week from the time this podcast airs. It's on May 8th in Rochester, New York. It is called Clarity Con Automotive. We brought in some national speakers. They all are doing me an awesome, awesome, awesome gesture by flying out here just for this event to talk about it. So Clarity Con Automotive, May 8th, Rochester, New York. We will link it up. If you're an automotive or retail and you want to come out, we would love to see you there. I would love to see you and meet you in person. We'll have a great time. As you Usual. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Pursue clarity. Oh, I had something else I wanted to do. Check this out. Ready? See that? Come on, you're supposed to dance around. I'm gonna drop this. Goodbye. <laughs>